This is a HeadGum Podcast. Bonus Thursday episode brought to you exclusively by Ballpark Flame Grilled Jerky. All right. Took 180 episodes, but Ballpark finally made a Flame Grilled Jerky. Just uh, for us? Just for us, just to sponsor this Bonus Thursday episode. Good stuff. They sent us packs and packs and packs. Stacks on stacks on stacks. Yo, we got jerky on deck, boss. Uh, and it comes in so many delicious flavors. Original beef, bourbon, barbecue beef, peppered beef, barbecue pork, and teriyaki pork. Ever had pork jerky before last week? Nope. It's actually pretty darn good. Yeah, it turns out we like it. Uh, they call it tough and tender because it is tough and tender. Uh, it's delicious. I don't know what else to say. It's jerky, so you know it's good. But then in addition to it just being jerky, is actually good jerky. Yeah. And they're they're helping they're sponsoring our uh, our show. Yeah, we got a whole entire Thursday episode thanks to them. Uh, our, our the theme of this episode is going to be tough and tender. We asked for people to tweet questions at us with hashtag tough and tender. Wow. We're just going to try to plow through them like we did the jerky that they sent us. Right. This is a very unique bonus Thursday episode. A lightning all round. Twitter, all hashtag, <laughs> all tough. And all tender. Uh, and it's thanks to, once again, Ballpark Flame Grilled Jerky. Let's get started. It's Jake, 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 and his good friend Amir. It is Jake. And Amir. It is Jake. And Amir. It's Jake, 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 and his good friend Amir. If I were you, the show. If I were you. It's incredible. Not epic enough. A single tear rolling down my cheek. We deserve more. No. We deserve more bombast. That was a national anthem. (laughs) Uh, Thank you to Chris and Amanda for that. Their last names are so close, but not the same. Amanda's last name is Goret, and Chris's last name is Giorgetti. Ooh. But they're both spelled with a G U E R E O T T E. Very interesting. So, Amanda and Chris, thank you for that. Um, we don't usually get full marching band themes, but uh, we'll take what we can get. Yeah, you know what? Hey, I think we should start soliciting some more because I really enjoyed that. It was uh, moving. Um, this is a special Thursday episode, like we mentioned before. Uh, we're answering all questions. Uh, we usually get emails with a little bit more in-depth uh, problems that we yeah, try to solve. Sometimes, to be honest, they're a little bit too in-depth. So uh, we're going to take to Twitter for this one. Yeah, we are looking at questions that were tweeted to us with the hashtag Tough and Tender, because yeah. that's what Ballpark Flame Grill Jerky is. Of course. And uh, we're going to do our best to answer as many as we can in the next, let's say, 45 minutes. All right. But before we get clock. into that, what do you think of my voice? I think what do you think is, of my new voice, I should say? I think it is hoarse. Oh. I think it is coarse. No. And I think you are going to listen to this episode and feel a little <laughs> bit of remorse. <laughs> um, You're I, sick. I think, I'm not sick. You're ill. Uh, no, absolutely not. I hear you hacking, <laughs> coughing, yeah, going wheezing. like... Yeah, all the time. Yeah. Well, yeah. what am I supposed to do? What? How else can I get the diseases out of me? I well, I would, to be honest, I would think that hacking that way must irritate your throat a little bit. Oh, like I should just swallow it? Yeah, but no, I don't know because I would do the same thing. I'm very thankful I'm not in your shoes. My diseases are always work the same way, which is I feel a little dryness in the back of my throat. That's day negative one. Mm. And right off the bat, it's very meaningless. Do you but always, I know. You oh, know I when know. it's coming, right? I know what the next four days will be like. Yeah. A little dryness. I seem fine. I don't want to make a big deal out of it, but I just know what's going to happen. Yeah. I don't think I've ever heard you lose your voice this badly, though. You, well, because what happens next is a sore throat. Then that goes away, and it goes into my nose. And then when that goes away, I get the last little bit of um, irritation we had an unhealthy week. I poisoned my body, and I don't. I do for deser- many a night. I do deserve this. The question is, why didn't you get this? You deserve You're gonna, it too. I'll ha- I will be sick. I'm going to a wedding in Mexico tomorrow. It's going to yeah. be lovely. I will get sick tonight, <laughs> and I'll be sick the entire weekend. Okay, thank you. That would really mean a lot to of course, me. Of course, of course. Because I would, I would hate for me to be the only sick person. I know. It's very hard to track sickness. Like I don't know if I've ever been sick when you were, you were when I. I feel like the way you get sick, although people are contagious, it's never like the most obvious route. 
Right. Like, well, I don't think I'll get you sick. I guess there are like different strains of cold and sickness and like maybe i w- will miss this one or maybe i don't know I, I don't know how fucking medicine works right you know what it is it's uh it's gonna happen um because i like touch stuff and then i pick my nose that's the way i get sick of it right well oh i think so yeah, yeah that's why you just you gotta always wash your hands yeah i gotta wash my hands more often yeah that's uh, when we go climbing sometimes and if i i like oh god you, you gotta really thoroughly wash yeah. your hands i gotten sick at the gym that, like because you're holding stuff that like everybody's yeah, sweating everyone's on been and then afterwards it. we're just doing like push-ups on yeah. the sweaty ass oh, floor God. yeah and then you're like oh okay can i i'm gonna do can i get um uh, a muscle milk yeah. and then you take off the top and then yeah. there you go just sucking yeah you're sucking and then, sweat and chalk worst, and dust what we do afterwards seemingly even worse is we will crawl to the rib place. Yeah. We'll crawl on our hands Licking and feet. Licking the ground the entire exactly. way. Exactly. So we'll we'll rub this little trail. Right. Then I get to the place. My hands are just covered in soot. Yeah. Just absolutely caked in this, this asphalt. And I start eating the ribs. And it's sloppy. And I'm licking right. my fingers. And oh, so right. good. And then you, but then you start to feel a little ill. You go to the bathroom. Yeah. You, you vomit, of yeah, course. I'll and then puke. you look and you're like, that's a waste of money. Right. And then you'll scoop. I'll scoop the, the rib, vomit. The rib, the rib vomit. Yeah. Right, right so back I'm, into your. Yeah, I'm taking a ladle and I'm putting it into a dish. Right, but you don't cup. want to eat it because no. it's disgusting. So you so have, a, have a you're little... putting it into your urethra. <laughs> yeah, of course, you yeah. have a little funnel. That's... You've heard of butt chugging. Mm-hmm. This is dick sagging. <laughs> so I'm like I'm I'm like Mork and Mindy when he puts his finger into of the glass course. and the water goes. Now that's down. tough, but yeah. it's also <laughs> a little tender. And I think that's why I got the cold. <laughs> Um, but we'll do our best. So right off the bat, you guys know that we're we're real deals. Yeah, we're smart dudes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so let's try to answer some Twitter questions. Okay. Um, I'll still not. I'll still give these people fake names, or at the very least, I won't say who who's asking them, just to keep them slightly anonymous. Right. Um, first question, right off the bat. Are you ready? Yeah. Should I embrace? the inevitable and already happening baldness and shave my head or are there secrets to hair growth hashtag tough and tender that's that's a tough problem and it's tender because the bald spots on your head are probably getting burnt by the sun absolutely next question (laughs) (laughs) we just explained why it's tough and tender um well i guess i know people who like have thinner hair and I think the cool look is to shave it, grow a beard if you can. So shaved head, uh, beard, yeah, and then glasses. There, yeah, that's pretty cool. That's a I cool th- look. I think it depends on the degree of baldness. If you have like basically a yarmulke on the back of your head of just skin, yeah, then I would. Then, then yeah, it's better to shave than do a comb over or anything right. like that. The worst is that you can, is you trying to hide it. Yeah, I think that I think you have to you have to come out ahead, right? Pun intended. You can't be, you cannot be shy. Think yeah. about like I think maybe even College Humor did this at one point. Like they photoshopped uh, Vin Diesel's actual hair onto his head on like all of his role. Like right. he looks so badass. Yeah. But what is he really? He's just like ha- he's a guy with male pattern baldness. So here's what you do: you work out. You dedicate your life to eating well yeah, and yeah. working out for, let's say, six months. You have to look too strong to grow hair. Yeah. That like way, the people, rock. So that way, you look better just because you've been working out and eating well. It is going to suck for six months. So what? You don't have cereal and cake mm-hmm. and pizza. It's six months. But how do people describe the rock? Do people say, oh, yeah, he's like that bald guy? No. Or do you say, no, oh, no. he's the most jacked guy in the world? Yeah. And then... Also, he's charming and has a good. Sp- oh, is he bald? I didn't even know. I didn't even know. Yeah, you want to, you want to, you want to be such a physical specimen, or at the very least, uh, improve yourself a little bit. That way, people are like, oh, you look good. So right now, you might be not in that great of a shape. Your hair is thinning. You maybe pale a little right. bit. Right. So they're like, oh, your your hair is thinning. Like, no, I don't have any hair. Yeah, and it's guess all what? gone. And feel my muscle. Yeah. Do you think, oh, that's... I, actually, I actually tweeted this at the Rock. But do you think he ever gets a cold? Can you imagine the rock? <laughs> Did he ever respond? No, I, I I said, I'm like, do you ever get a cold? I can't imagine you sneezing. <laughs> what is the rock like when he gets the sniffles? What is the rock That's like so when he takes funny. NyQuil and then he feels groggy in the morning when he wakes up? Yeah, the rock at his sickest is still better than you at your like peak physical. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. But he must. At the same time, he must get like the flu or a cold or something, right? I don't know. He's not immune. Although right. if you do keep your body in a great shape. And like what happens when he hurts himself? You know, like w- the other day I sort of twisted my ankle coming up the stairs. Yeah. I was like, ow, that was dumb. Yeah, he like, tweaks. Does, does he ever if stub he, like, his toe? Yeah, if he stubs his toe or shuts his finger in a drawer. Like if he can't, gets pinched for a second, yeah, is he you, like, ooh, does he shake it? Or is he just he, like, that was nothing to me? Right. Do you think he's ever said, like Oh, that. yeah, like if he burned his hand on a... Ah. Do you think he's ever just like had tea that was a little too hot? Oh yeah, like, like ah. opened popcorn in the steam. This is sort of like uh, yeah. Matt Damon actually yeah. <laughs> talking about it, but it's all physical stuff. Yeah, I don't think didn't there was this video of The Rock who like broke his finger. Remember he had like he's like I have to do this stunt for this movie. He's like live streaming. He's like and look what happened to my pinky. And he pans down and his pinky's like at a right angle. Jesus. He's like, but I said pop that some bitch back into place. We got a we got a movie to shoot. God, he's cool. <laughs> Uh, so the answer is no he doesn't ever stub his toe <laughs> do you ever get nervous rock yeah does he ever get the like if he had to host the oscars would he get nerves i don't know he seems like he's too charming he's the most electrifying man in all of entertainment today frankly um so embrace it shave it improve other parts of your body yeah look there's got to be some other bald like superstars that you can look up to namely the rock and the, just like embody that the thing is it will look um looks it looks a little daunting at first a little different at first but then people get used to it yeah you every every new haircut is is like like even though a haircut that i got the short on the sides thing looked extreme for the first couple times yeah then you went back and you got a one on the sides you're like it's not short enough right now i have to go shorter maybe i'll shave my head too that'd be cool have you ever gotten a buzz cut uh, not since I was in like high school. You buzzed it in high school? Yeah, in high school I shaved my head. What about your mohawk? Yeah, and a mohawk. That was chill. That was like three weeks ago. Yeah. Well, are you done with the mohawk? Um, I don't know. I kind of... I, I think I like... What am I trying to say? I like the mohawk, but not as severe as it was on the sides in the back. Like, I basically want a mullet, I think. Oh, like shaved on the sides, fading into a mullet. <laughs> then you want it, the mullet is like actual like hair that grows from the bottom most point of the mohawk down onto your neck. Uh, well, yeah, I don't want that. I want like, but I want the back of my hair to be as long as the top of my head right now. Right, and then the, just the sides shaved. I think. Right. So like, <laughs> before there was a mohawk, there was like maybe two inches in on each side on the back of my head. Uh huh. And I don't want that anymore. I just want the sides gone, the back, back normal. And I have no idea if, if what I'm asking for that, if that's like an average haircut or if they're like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? It's definitely about? not average, but the question is, is it cool? Yeah, I don't know. It, it's not born even for me trying to be cool. Like I did the well, show. Where did you get this idea from? Basically, because I saw the back of my head when I had the shaved sides all around mm-hmm. and it looked... Like I was wearing wearing like a dumb little hat of hair, uh-huh. and I was like, I think I want hair on the back of my head. I don't care about it on the sides. I think shaving the side looks cool, interesting. But on the back, I'm like, I think I like having hair back there. So that's it. And then uh, you told me I looked like a French soccer player when I got the mohawk. So I was like, that's kind of what I'm going for. Yeah, soccer players have the coolest haircuts. Yeah, isn't? I was talking about this yesterday, like. If we're talking like soccer players and basketball players have like really cool style haircut, and then baseball is just like the op- like the coolest thing you have in baseball is a goatee. Yeah, why like, is that? I don't know, but it's like the worst fashioned sport there is. I think. I guess because it's like we'll think of the people that play baseball; they're a little bit more like old fashioned, right? They're not like they're not like it's not a cool stylish sport. Yeah, oh, my you friend don't see- is saying like yeah, they don't even wear like. Um, performance hats like the hats that they wear in baseball i guess they're like to keep the sun out of your eyes but right. like really they're not like it's not like wearing a helmet or anything and the pants are baggy and you wear a belt yeah baggy pants belt hat how like can big you look baggy cool? shirt yeah and then then you go like after football soccer basketball like there's at the press conferences it's basketball especially people yeah. just like look fucking dope you know yeah, like the glasses the suits yeah and then i feel like basketball is almost like about fashion in a way right like basketball shoes are like fucking dope what are the new jordans the lebrons whatever you know 
Yeah, but nobody's no, like, like, who's got oh, the newest cleats? Yeah, I want the Derek Jeter t-shirt. He fucking sponsors a Ford Escape. How yeah. cool is Derek Jeter? Are there even like hot baseball players? Yeah, I don't know. Derek Jeter was like the hottest one for a long time. And he's, and he's not even that hot. He's a seven. Yeah, <laughs> he's a baseball 10, sure. But he couldn't, he couldn't get with girls if he was in the NBA, I don't think. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if they're a hot baseball player. I guess there are, but... Even like Odell Beckham in football has like the the big like the puffy yellow afro thing. Yeah, in football. There's a lot of like really dope dreads coming out of helmets, and like there's a lot of dudes with long hairs. So right, it's pretty cool. I think maybe it's just because uh, baseball is filled with white people, and white yeah. people are inherently not as stylish. Right. Yeah, that's fair. Like, can like you imagine Ryan instance. Sandberg just <laughs> wearing what Russell Westbrook wears out? Jason Veritek. <laughs> Just wearing a nice form-fitted suit <laughs> with big red glasses. Jason Veritek definitely gets sick. Uh, <laughs> all right, another question. Hashtag tough and tender. How do you start to get over a long-term relationship? I mean, like, step one. Towards getting a long-term relationship? To get over one. Oh, to get over one. Yeah. See, I this is another thing that's like... Um, you have to embrace it the same way that that dude's about to embrace his bald head. You have to be like, what are the things that I didn't get in my long-term relationship, right? Right. So like a shit ton of me time right off the bat. You were like, I, I love the idea of self-improvement after a long relationship. Because I think the instinct is like to binge drink and like right. not take care of yourself and like wallow in your depression. And, and look worse. Yeah, definitely like find comfort in like laziness and junk food and stuff but i love the idea of just being like i am going to kick myself into shape didn't we t we talked about like yeah just improving yourself getting into good shape taking care of yourself going out there meeting friends right which is extra cool if you got dumped yeah because then it's like look how much better i am now and it's kind of a dick move if you dump somebody and then you become really hot and better. Right. Well, it's then still it's like, wait, why did you wait to dump me before you did that? Well, sometimes when someone dumps somebody, it's because they're miserable in the relationship and they have to get out of it. So they're sad. It's like a whole sad ordeal. Right. And exercising and stuff is a good way, one, to feel better because it's like it's a natural high. Mm -hmm. And two, you'll have extra time to do it yeah. because you're no longer in a long-term relationship, which, as you know, is a little bit of a responsibility and time commitment. Yeah, exactly. And if now you're, you, you're going to look good too. You're, if you're in a long-term relationship, that's like three to six hours a day. Yeah. That's sort of lifted now. It's gone. That you're, you're not texting, you're not emailing, you're not eating meals, you're not sleeping with, right. which is obviously some good, some bad, but at the very least, you'll have more free time on your hands. That's what you got. Like, don't think about it as loneliness. Think about it as freedom. Oh, shit. Like, I'm lonely? No, I am free. Nah, I'm horny, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. I'm horny, dude. <laughs> I ain't lonely shit. I'm horny. <laughs> uh, we were talking about leading an exercise class. Not necessarily leading one. But being a part of one. Yeah, like some sort of like um, Michelle Obama-esque uh fitness promoting i am the first lady of if i were you uh so yeah we should do that this I, is just this is sort of planting the seed out there to see if people would be into it but if I, we had like i just want michelle obama arms i'm serious She's yeah dude. long and lean and like so toned dude i think you're actually slut shaming her right now what all you care about is her body and not what she's actually doing with no obesity. <laughs> yeah because i'm like talking about how like how cool of a person she is and you're you saying, talking like, about her, her physical exercise. appearing no her you <laughs> <laughs> don't talk because now you're mansplaining at me i'm not saying you anything. are mansplaining can i mansplain something to you for a second sure you don't know okay don't even say sure because even what? that's a, you're that's enough. Okay. I'm no, don't anything. even say anything. Dear God, man. That's Swim. awesome. Um, should we get to the next question? Uh, before we do that, we should rent out a gym and uh, have everybody come and do a workout. Well, like a CrossFit? I don't know, because I don't like CrossFit. Oh, shit. I don't want to offend anybody that takes CrossFit. No, because they get all kicked by the shit out of me. <laughs> They're all stronger than me. But I don't like the idea of uh, leading a shitload of people in CrossFit because it's a... Uh, great way for all of our uh, friends to get injured but you do like the idea of a minimalist gym yeah i do 
just some nice simple exercises that people can do at home. Right. So you're talking about doing like a podcast where it's an exercise or like actually I don't even know if we should do a podcast, just like a straight up meetup where like we get a cool fitness instructor to lead everybody in a class. Oh. And then like, hey, we could tweet about it or we could Facebook about it. And then we go there and who knows, maybe like a couple dozen people show up and do some exercise with us and that'll make everyone feel good. Yeah, that's nice. (laughs) And then maybe we can start charging cash for it. Yeah. And if any chicks show up, then we can screw them. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So we get to get screwed and we get money. I'm lonely. I'm (laughs) horny. I am scared. I am deaf. I am coy. Um... Do men ever notice manicured nails, or am I spending my money on female validation? That was from Jeff Rosenberg. Hum. <laughs> Is it really? No. Oh. Uh, do men notice manicured nails? Oh, Dave got a manicure. Yeah. Is that why? You, That's why maybe why I thought of it. Uh, yeah, Dave got a straight up manicure last time. He doesn't take care of any, like he had lost his wallet, but he had perfectly yeah. manicured nails. Yeah. How, if your wallet is a cigarette pack, maybe you should invest in a wallet, not yeah. a, a manicure. Yeah, dude, for real. Uh, buy a loofah. I wouldn't have noticed. I actually recently did buy a loofah. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, not a loofah, uh, a natural sponge. Uh, <laughs> anywho. <laughs> it, is, it is made out of recycled coral from the Great Barrier <laughs> Reef. Uh, I don't think I would notice manicured nails. Is it something that like makes you, the owner of the manicure like feel really good? I mean, I take care of my nails, and I feel like that's pretty good. Yeah, I think the goal of manicure a manicure is not it's not to get guys' attention. I don't think. I think it's like to feel better about oh, yourself. Wait, a girl asked that question. Yeah, girl. She said, "Oh, sorry, I didn't know. I thought it was like a guy saying, is it okay if I manicure my nails?'" Oh no, no. it was like a girl saying, "I'm spending money on manicures. Like, do guys even notice?" Oh yeah, certainly not. At least I don't at all. I mean, guys barely even notice haircuts, which are so much more drastic. Yeah, <clears throat> manicured nails is like such a small portion of the female anatomy. But to me, I think I think a lot of that like um, maintenance stuff is about the person having it. Yeah, like you get a new haircut and you get your nails done. You're like, Oh, I feel good. I feel confident. If it's making you feel good, then that's great. And if, if you're only, if you feel shitty and you're only doing it for guys attention, then, you know, don't cause that's fine. Right. You, you sh- there's better ways to spend your money. If you want to get a guy's attention, right? Like you can buy a hockey Jersey and then wear a hockey Jersey. Yeah. Or like, yeah, or if I saw a girl in like a Boston Red Sox hat, even though yeah. I hate the Red Sox, yeah. I would be like, this girl likes baseball. But I like, love yeah. baseball. Like a worn Boston Red Sox hat. Yeah. Like it's sort of like a faded denim. Right, right. So like a faded blue denim. This is the second and, time we're talking about Boston Red Sox. Jason Ver- It's Jason Veritek's <laughs> daughter. Um, all right. Next question. Mm-hmm. I have a passive aggressive roommate who won't tell me what bothers her. How do I make it to the end of our lease? Oh, wait, sorry, say that again? I have a passive-aggressive roommate who won't tell me what bothers her. How do I make it to the end of our lease? How long is the lease? Let's say seven more months. I love it. Yeah. Oh, man, yeah, that's really tough. Can you move out? Can't you move out? Can you can you re- always move out. It, it's less serious of a breakup because, like, what you hate your roommate. What happens if you move out? The roommate hates you. I'm like oh you, good you don't live there anymore yeah. it's not that big of a deal and i think it's not a big deal to break up with a roommate because like you don't get along and worst case i guess like it's sometimes tough if it's like a friend of yours that you moved moved in with and, right <clears throat> what you do is you find a better place and that gives you an excuse to leave you say look i'd love to stay i love how you don't tell me the shit that bothers you i yeah. fucking i love that yeah it's great You're how so you just quiet. sort of like yeah you get quietly angry and then i ask you if anything's wrong and you say it's fine quickly and walk away right but then the other day i came home and there were a bunch of dirty dishes on my bed yeah so i feel like <laughs> stuff is getting to you uh but i did find this awesome apartment so i'm gonna look for somebody to replace me right here you just give a ton of heads up. You're like, I am like, I, I'm moving out for whatever white lie you want to tell, like whatever reason you got a great deal on a place or you got a, <clears throat> you are in a relationship, you're going to move out. I, and then you say, I'll, I'll deal with yeah. replacing me. Fake That's all that matters. Re- fake relationship. You say, oh, I'm going on a date tonight with Rory. 
And then you come back, you're like, I actually eloped with Rory. And yeah, me and Rory. The date went so well that Rory and I are already thinking of moving in together. Yeah, and he has a fucking amazing deal on a two bedroom loft, and I'm going to move in with him. And he yeah. Gets, yeah, and I'll find somebody to replace me, and I'll pay the rent until I do. Yeah. And there you go. And maybe your roommate will be like, you know what? I want to be in charge of finding your replacement because I want to be sure that. Uh, I can get along with them because, as you know, I'm very passive aggressive. Yeah. Uh, so you get, yeah, that way you leave, and then whether she's mad at you or not, it doesn't matter. Right. The thing is, if you're noticing a lot of passive aggressive behavior, it, there's a chance that your roommate also hates you. So if you're like, I want right. to move out, they're like, oh, dope. Dope. Yeah. Awesome. That'd be the great. The problem maybe arises if you're like, I don't like my roommate, but I want to make him or her leave mm. and I want to stay. But I think if that's the case, you can't unless you found the place yeah it's hard to do the force over like if you're driving fast on a highway you get really close to the car in front of you and they move out of your way right i don't know what the real estate equivalent to that is yeah i don't know just like well you could turn your apartment into like a drug den get it to the point where the roommate uh, wants to move out yeah maybe rory moves in yeah that's a good idea so rory's just always around yeah a rory overstays his welcome often uh, he does and honestly fish and rory start stinking after yeah. three days you it's know like, how sometimes you like hock a loogie into your bathroom sink mm -hmm. rory does that in the kitchen sink yeah and then sometimes he'll do that like not even in a sink Right, just on the floor. Or into a bowl. The other day, I saw Rory say, like... Who? Rory came out of the bathroom, <laughs> and he was like, there's no more toilet paper. And I was like, Who oh, is this? I'll pick some up. Rory. And then he walked over, grabbed a roll of this? paper towel. Rory did it. And he... Instead of taking it back into the bathroom, he just Who's wadded he? it up. Rory, Rory, dude. He wiped his ass in the kitchen. Rory's Rory. ass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Follow along. I am. And Rory... Then he picked up the paper towel. Who did? Rory. Tossed it out. Wow. in the garbage who did that <laughs> forget it dude what forget it man who did it to how that? could you forget it <laughs> you know what else i saw rory do who? once <laughs> rory <laughs> <laughs> it's like who's on first what with rory <laughs> what did you see who do that rory did it rory did what rory was like he he he, he, he was he 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 yeah he like uh, who's he in this scenario rory rory <laughs> rory is sitting on the freaking remote during the big game yeah so and the channel, channel changed. would change and then, and then what do like, you say to who was it again rory rory what so would you I'd be say like, to him rory you gotta stop sitting on the remote and he's like what all right you take him? rory i didn't hear that. rory did it yeah so then rory <laughs> and then he would he would have his own remote that's insane rory rory would <laughs> just a classic rory such a Rory. He's a classic Rory. Rory. Uh, how do you feel about girls with PhD? Not a medical doctor. Huh? How do you feel about girls with a PhD? I guess a doctorate degree, but not a medical doctor. Oh. Uh, neutral. Oh, it doesn't turn you on? Or off. It's just fine. I guess if I met somebody that had a PhD or like, you know, th they were extra smart, I would be like a little turned on. I'd be like, well, that's really cool. You uh, tell me more about that. Yeah, I'd be way into it. Like yeah. if I was dating a doctor of anything. Even if Can it doctors was like, like that write uh, prescriptions? Yeah, I don't think you're focusing on the right thing. <laughs> like if she could get yeah. any Xanax, that would be... Right, yeah, no, I'm talking about a girl who like dedicated 12, 12 years of her life to getting so like she a could doctor get me in like economics. Fucking, huh, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's not necessary, or history. Right, right. But I mean like still then that means she could get No, I don't, think, like, I don't think professors can get she you She could get ambient. Ritalin. No, yeah, I don't think so. Really? I don't think that's... I think you have to be an MD. Like to get an Adderall, that, that would be fucking... Right. So, she so, doesn't get me that? Who? I would, Rory, <laughs> I'd be down to date either a doctor or a girl with like a drug connect that like <laughs> could so, get us Adderall. And, and which shit. one do you prefer? Like a... Uh, connect. <laughs> <laughs> so if I can date like a history professor or a drug dealer. Yeah. Anybody with that connect. Yeah. No. The connect four. Should we, we should take a break. There is no break, man. This is all sponsored by the same goddamn thing. Oh, shit. There's no break? We could take a break and think one more time. Ballpark flame grilled jerky. Gracias. Uh, but we don't have to take it. We don't have to stop. I mean, we could take like a really like a kind of like an emotional respite from well, maybe no, talk I, about should... our shows or something like that. Yeah. Maybe let's talk about the shows. Just like we do have real... five epic shows coming up. I'm very excited about these shows. Two in November. No, four in, Oct four in December. Yeah. Four in December. Two in November. Four Three in December. In November. Three? Oh Muhlenberg. My God. 
We have seven shows coming up. Yeah, in the next two months. Is that too many shows? Perhaps. Um, first one uh, is Wednesday, November 11th. Wednesday is November? No, I think Wednesday is November... Yeah, because Friday is the 13th. Oh, okay. So Oh, no, so Tuesday, Tuesday. November 10th, yeah. we're at Muhlenberg College. Muhlenberg. Muhlenberg College. I'll yeah. get it right once we get there. Allentown, what up? This is my homecoming show. Really? Well, not in a way. I went to school in Bethlehem for a year, so... Yeah, so this is a very, My triumphant return to the Steel Town. homecoming. I lived in Bethlehem for eight months. Uh, and then the next day we're going to be in... Or wait, maybe Allentown's Cole. I don't know. We'll I'll, figure, it, I'll out. figure it out by the time I get there. Uh, Wednesday is our show in Philadelphia. Yeah, Wednesday Philly show. That'll be a fun one. At the Helium Comedy Club. We have not been to Philadelphia in like two years. Yeah. And then Thursday, November 12th. We've never done a live podcast in Philadelphia. No. Uh, Thursday, that's our true homecoming show. That's the Brooklyn show. That's, that's the one that's almost sold out. Dude, that's not even fucking, like, that's not even just New York City. You know, that's Brooklyn. And that's not just Brooklyn. It's Williamsburg. We're going back to the hometown. Yeah, that's, that's the a, epicenter. Oh, I love it. My glasses are getting bigger already just I'm, thinking about it. I Yeah, I'm nervous about what's going to happen after that show. Oh, I will. You think I'm sick now? Yeah, dude. I want to be fucking. Come find me on Friday. I want to be, be in a goddamn fucking helicopter, Lamar Odom style, just being wow. airlifted. Pumped. You of, know he only got airlifted to get pumped with more herbal Viagra. Really? Right? That was the emergency. That was the helicopter? There wasn't enough. Thank God he survived so he can make these jokes. I mean... We probably shouldn't make him either way. But. Right, of course. But if you're not laughing at... Yeah, honestly, you have to laugh at it. We have <laughs> so to make funny jokes. funny that people have, yeah, like, we have to laugh. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, not all the time. Right. No, we're just assholes. You yeah. don't have to laugh. And then what about our December Northwest tour? Yeah, that's going to be the real shit. That's starting in... starting December in, 2nd. It's, December 2nd, we're starting in San Francisco, working our way up. San Francisco, Portland, Seattle, fourth. Vancouver. Yeah, that's the second, December 2nd in San Francisco, 4th in Portland, 5th in Seattle, 6th in Vancouver. Yeah. Vancouver is kicking ass. We have sales. never been to Vancouver and those shows are almost sold out. Yeah, that's like a, it's selling at like four times the rate of the other shows. It's amazing. Canada's fucking bringing it. I cannot wait. I think we're bigger in Canada. We should move there. Are we hockey of ourselves? Are we hotline bling? Am I a maple man? Because our shows, I'm a in maple Mont man. Our shows in Montreal, Toronto, and now Vancouver are outselling all the shows in America. Yeah, well, man, I can't wait for the. I love the Pacific Northwest. I really do. It has it all. It has rain. It has uh, um, it's, wood. It's green. Yeah. It's mountainous. When everybody's I, friendly, things are fucking hip there. Yeah, I think of green. I think of gray. Absolutely, gray and green, just fog. Well, the summers are very lovely. Absolutely. Uh, so those are the big shows we have coming up. Tickets for all of them available at if I were you show dot com or jakeandamir dot com. Um, we should really redo the Jake and Amir website. Right. We have to do that. That's the next big project, dog. Thanks, man. Thanks. Now that we got that headgum sign up, we finally did it. Or um, Marty's dad did it. Well, still. Yep. Um, all right. Do you have more? Do you have time for more questions? What are we doing on time? Oh. 35 minutes-ish. All right, let's do it. All right. Has there ever been a fan theory better than your original intent? And what's the punchline to your favorite joke? Hmm. I liked one of the fan theories that I only existed in your brain. Yeah, I remember that one. That was like a Jake and Amir fan theory that... That was one we considered embracing, but then it was like we, it was a little too tough to like shoehorn it in since we didn't uh, you know, enter the series with that. Right, mind. it was tough and also tender. Yeah, it was a little bit tender. We did, the, we did that uh, Halloween episode that was like that. Yeah, that's where true. Where we made it seem like I had died three years ago and you were talking to me. Right. And you were quote-unquote annoyed with me, but it was actually nobody there. Yeah. But then it turns out I was just actually there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do you have a punchline to your favorite joke? Mm. You think it means Jake and Amir joke or any joke? Any joke in general? Um, any joke will do? I, I mean, I can't think of this type of thing off the top of my head. Didn't you once memorize a joke for when people asked you? Yeah, I did. Do you I, remember the joke? It's a little off color. 
Uh, and this isn't the place for it. Wasn't it about? No, I can. It's um. It was a. It's a pedophile joke. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, this is a safe space. So this is guys. It's a little off color. But if we I, have to laugh about yeah, it, we, have, we really have to. We laugh. have to laugh. Yeah. So it is. I believe it's something along the lines of my good friend Jessica came up to me the other day, and Ooh. she was Jessica. <laughs> if we're gonna do this, I'm not gonna tell the joke. Uh, she came up to me, and she was just appalled. Really? She was, yeah, she, uh, she, there's something going on. And I was like, Jessica, what's the matter? And she said, I just found out that, um, that two out of every 10 families lives next door to a pedophile. Huh. And I said, geez, that is really, that's really bothersome. But thankfully that's not the case with me. I live next door to two smoking hot 10 year olds. <laughs> <laughs> I told that joke to a bunch of strangers in an elevator once. And? Uh, deafening applause they really loved it. they loved it they ate it right up what about the one about the bus oh the bus is another <laughs> good one um so i was um i heard a story from um oh okay, here this is what it is okay so i was riding the back of the, i was riding the bus and a woman got on and she, uh the bus driver <laughs> says to the lady hey lady that's the ugliest baby i've ever seen and she can't. She comes. She sits down next to me. She's appalled. She's yeah. just, frankly, you know. A lot of your, yeah. A lot of the people in your stories are well, appalled. Yeah, she was appalled. And I said, "Ma'am, what's what's the bother? What's the matter? What's the matter?" And she said, "That bus driver just insulted me." And I said, "Hey, you don't take shit from anybody. You go up. You go up there and you tell the bus driver off. Here, I'll hold your monkey." <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Classic. Yeah. Um, there's another one that I heard about a pedophile, actually. Last time I told the pedophile joke, some, yeah. a guy... Uh, these are all jokes I like stole from Reddit, by the way. Right. I mean, all jokes are jokes that you steal. Yeah. So um, this one I thought was really funny. Okay. There's like a pedophile walks into the woods with a kid, and the kid says, Hey, mister, I'm really scared. And the guy <laughs> says, Oh, you're scared? How do you think I feel? I have to walk out of here alone. <laughs> That one's quicker and it's funny. Yeah, that means he killed the kid, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, like, you know, that's like obviously... fucks the kid and then just spins away. <laughs> I mean, it's not funny, but we have to laugh. <laughs> we really have to laugh at the idea. Otherwise, I don't feel like... That's what every comedian start... wishes people would embrace. Yeah, we really... You have to laugh. Yeah, we just have to laugh. Just because we are laughing. Just because I made a weird joke doesn't mean we don't have to laugh. Well, shit, this is a tough and tender thing that we should talk about. Oh, good thing you wrote it down. I, that's why I did it, because we missed for the last, like, three or four weeks. It's the official end. Yeah. What do you think? We It is With coming great... to a close. <laughs> uh, j- Textjake.com is... We're gonna shutter. We're gonna shutter the business. Um, it's been around for over a year, right? Is it over a year? I think that so. That makes me happy. So for the last year plus, Jake has been receiving... Uh, text messages from you guys uh, and give, offering his advice on what you should respond. Yeah. And we've gotten thousands. I believe it's thousands. Yeah. And every time I thought about shutting it down before, because it like, would sometimes get a little overwhelming, yeah. I'd like some texts would come in and I would be like, wow, I really, this person really did need a little help. And there have been a couple instances where some guys said that they've sent the text and the girls say they've sent the text and they've gotten laid. So that's been, that's made me feel really good. You've helped people have sex with each other. Yeah. I've helped people have sex. I've helped people break up. I've helped people fire their housekeeper. Yep. Just be kinder, be better. Uh, and you, you also, I feel like this is a crash course in human psychology. You've yeah. gotten, you've gotten an intimate look into thousands of people's phones uh, and their conversations with uh, them trying to impress another human. It's crazy how different everybody is. So what, what, do you, what, what have you learned? What have you gleaned from this? I feel like one of the general rules has been if the person thinks they, um, they're like, I don't want to come on too strong, or like, I don't know if this person likes me, but I maybe want to ask them out. Like, if they're that sort of self-aware and humble, yeah. almost like at least 90% of the time I've been like, this is going great. Like yeah. fire, like go for it, go for it. Like ask her out, ask him out. Like it's usually going better than they think. And then the texts that are like, I just want to fuck this girl. So like, I'm really cool. What do I say? And then there's like four texts to that girl yeah. where she hasn't responded with a question mark or even at all. Right. I'm like, I've definitely told people that have huge egos. Like this is going bad. How do the Bail. huge egos get such a huge ego? And how do the, how do know. the humble people get so humble? 
I don't understand. I think it's just like you're born with it. I don't think that it's like people have like earned these huge egos. They're just like they have huge egos and that's probably turning people off to them. You want to hear my theory? Yeah. It's how attractive you were in high school and junior oh, high. I see. So like I feel like I'm very humble because I wasn't like a hot teenager. Right. So I was like ingrained to me to feel bad about myself, self-deprecating. Yeah. So like when I'm talking to somebody and it's like going somewhat well, I'm like, oh, she's not interested in me. Yeah. Because I've I was I I, I I'm, I'm hardwired to think that it's interesting because like in a way I wouldn't even advise you to be more confident. You'd probably be like a little bit more confident, right? right. Just like to actually like take charge and ask people out on occasion or whatever. But most of the time, I think overconfidence is like bad. It's not very attractive to anybody, right? It borderline on cockiness. Yeah. So it's hard to it's hard to be humble and then also confident at the same time. It's true. And so what's the plan? Can oh, people no longer buy texts? I think we should do one more week. So, cause we announced it right now, right? So yeah. So this will be on Thursday, Thursday, October 22nd. How about on Monday? Like we'll, so we'll do one more podcast announcing it. And Monday will be the last day to buy texts. Monday, October 26th. Yeah. So you can use them in the future and I'll answer them. Yeah, like if if you purchase text, Jake will still fulfill that promise yeah, to you. There will no more text for sale after Monday. After Monday, but we'll still serve the texts that have been sold. Got it. So if you have your ticket, uh, or if you haven't, get it now because your window of opportunity is closing. Uh, and then by Monday, it'll be shut forever. Yeah, end of an era. It was a good time though. A solid year. Yeah. And we we probably made close to six and a half, seven million dollars. It's interesting, just like capitalizing on humans like that. Yeah. Well, what we did was like uh, monetize your skill. So, for example, if you were a basketball player, you could have made that money easily. Yeah. If you were a carpenter, I'm sure you could have built enough tables to make seven million dollars. Right. Yeah. A no, year. we took all the money and we invested it hard in some really risky stocks. Very. A lot of blue day chips. trading. Yeah. Penny penny stocks mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. uh, and we lost it mostly all. Yeah, and what we we're took left it to, with is, we took the the small profit, the meager profit to yeah. uh, Vegas. We said, "Let it ride, let it ride on twenty two black, baby." And, and we lasted four spins. It lasted, Amazing, yeah. Like twenty two black hit three times in a row. And we just kept feeling and the flow. Let it ride, let, let it, it ride, ride, let, let it, ride. it ride. By the end, we were up. I mean, probably forty fifty million dollars. And then we said, "Let it ride one more time," because if we hit, yeah. then we never have to worry about a thing in our lives. Yeah, for generations, I feel like. Yeah, and, and it, it hit. hit. <laughs> it hit. And, and then we cashed four. out and we, we took that out. bag of cash uh -huh. and we fell asleep. And when we woke up, it was asshole gone. I know. It was just just like we fell gone. asleep on the fucking cash <laughs> on a mound of cash yeah. in the center of the MGM. Like, yeah. Absurd. Who stole like by the that? bell desk. Who stole that? What's from like, under why our did nose? we fall asleep with it? Like we curled <laughs> up on it like a, like two weird cats. Yeah. Just like playing in our money. Hay. Yeah. Our money stack. Mm hmm. And now that money's gone. Gone diddly on. Unfair, uncouth, ungood. Unkind. Uh, one last question. Sure. Then you really have to go. Yeah, I have to pee, actually. So, um, At which point should you talk to the person you're dating about whether they're still on Tinder or Bumble? At, what point, at which point should you talk to the person you're dating about whether they're still on Tinder. So let's say I meet someone on Tinder or Bumble. We haven't even spoken about Bumble on our show. Yeah, Bumble's a good one. I like Bumble a lot. Bumble might have surpassed Tinder. Yeah, for sure. Bumble is uh, it's like Tinder with the wrinkle of girls have to message guys first. And if they don't message a guy within 24 hours, the match disappears. It's amazing. So I said it's like Bumble is like Tinder, but for people that know about Bumble. Yeah. So it's like a little a little more people your style. Right. People that listen to podcasts. Yeah, that's true. So check also, out like, Bumble if you haven't. Easier for women to join that because there's so many less well there's less creeps cuz you don't have to Yeah. I don't know. The creeps have sort of like a hurdle. You have to like them at first. And you have to message them. Yeah. Girls have to message guys. So uh I wouldn't ask at all. Never. Probably not. When do you delete it yourself? Um the problem with deleting it is like in the back of the guy's mind, they're like, there's no greater feeling than leaving one of these dating apps just dormant running in the background from when you are single. Yeah. Because then you just got that that whole like month or two of swipes just wet, like building yeah. up. 
That's interesting. So you don't want like for a guy to get rid of that. It's almost like he should wait until he's engaged. That's like that's when he truly knows that he's not going to be single again for a while. Well, I think when you really care about somebody, you, you probably stop caring about the swipes adding up. Right. So when you stop caring about that, then delete it. Right. But it is it's a tough one to get rid of. Um, but then you don't want to be like in a six month relationship and then have the girl be like, "Hey, my friend found you on Tinder." Yeah. So I mean, I would, I guess, probably like before a month is up. One if month. you've had, the, if I mean, if you've had an exclusivity talk, then you shouldn't be on Tinder, right? But you don't have to inquire. That's like, at which one do you have to talk to someone about if they're cheating on you or not? Right. I think, and I wouldn't say like, are you still on Tinder? Are you still on? But like, I would just say maybe as casually as you possibly can. Like, I deleted Tinder or something. Like, it was a big moment. Like, I don't know be fucking cool about it, but you just let them know that you deleted it without any expectation of, did you delete it or whatever? Right. And then maybe they'll volunteer that information. Maybe they'll say, I deleted it two weeks ago, you asshole. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it's better to just not bring it up. And when you feel comfortable, delete it yourself. Assume that the person you're dating is not also actively on it. Yeah, trying I'm sure to meet other they will. People. I think that's just like a pretty standard. Uh, stand, uh, an implicit agreement between guy and girl. Yeah. Um, these questions truly were, Tough and tender. tender. Absolutely. Uh, thanks for everybody who tweeted at us. Uh, we'll be back on Monday with more uh, regularly scheduled questions. Uh, those can be emailed to us at ifireyoushow at gmail.com. Thanks one last time to Ballpark Flame Grilled Jerky for sponsoring this bonus episode. For real. Uh, tough and tender jerky in a variety of flavors. Gluten-free, no added MSG, no artificial flavors and colors. If you're in the supermarket... Uh, check it out. Uh, I can tell you from personal experience that it is actually delicious. Um, the opening theme song, again, was written by Amanda and Chris. This closing one was by Tony. It's a Stony parody, a parody of the one that Stony made for us hey, back in the day. A pair of Stony. <laughs> yeah, nice dude. Thanks. Uh, thanks to Jake. Thanks to Rory. Thanks to all you guys for calling in. Who? I'll be. <laughs> I'll be back on Monday with an even worse voice, if you can imagine. Wow. Hashtag sexy voice. We're out. Listen up, everybody. This is what I'd do if I were you. If I were you. Listen up, everybody. This is what I'd do if I were you. If I were you. Jake and Amir need a name to preserve your anonymity. Absolutely, I have July 13th. That's good. That's good. Even better. Listen up, everybody. This is what I do if I were you. If I were you. Listen up, everybody. No. This is what I do if I were you. If I were Jake and Amir, need a name to preserve your anonymity. That's good. That's good. Even better. That was a headgum podcast.